Hello YouTube, this is Random Name 679 here. I am filming this video in an attempt to introduce you to the basic concepts of, compu of computer programming. And for this video we'll, we'll be using what is called Visual Basic. Now this isn't on a, a PC, which is where Visual Basic was originally designed. This is on a Mac. So I'm using an online compiler. And if you want to use the online compiler also, you could follow the link in the description or I'll make an annotation on this window and you can click that hopefully but otherwise the link will be in the description so let's get to it now first we gotta get familiar with this specific websites way of printing things out and outputting statements so this specific website uses console.writeline and anything that's inside of the parentheses it will print so let's get familiar with what's called a data type. So here in quotation marks is called a string. Now anything could be a string. There could be a blank string. Gotta hate this website. Um, you could use a blank string, which is nothing. And if you print that out using console.write line, nothing prints out. Anything. Oh, and by the way, anything after this mono mono demo dot exe, ex, e exe. I'm sorry, is what is the output of the program. So but if we say we output hello that is a string because anything any amount of characters is a string that are non numbers it's a string so here it printed out hello that's what we wanted to have printed out okay so the other kind of main data type that we're going to be focusing on in this in this video this very brief introduction is a number so if we want to do a number those are usually not in quotation marks so you just type in a number and it will print out four now numbers are what can be used for math so we could do four times eight and that will evaluate to 32 because we can do math inside of a statement now if we wanted to print out as a string the number four we can do that but we cannot do is the string four times five because that's mixing two different data types and that is bad. It will actually apparently it works in this version of of VB, which is stupid because it shouldn't. Um, but overall, that's a programming concept, and that's what we're focusing on in this video is programming concepts. So if you learn take the time to learn another language, it will not work. So you need to use a function called str and we'll get over that in lit in a different part of this video so here make sure you can copy 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 this to your clipboard because we're going to be using that statement the, the right line statement very often in this video so we're going to start by declaring variables now a variable is something that can hold data or a number or a string whatever you want it to in effect and so the way that we can let's make some space here so you can see what we're doing um, the way that we make a ver declare a variable it's called is by in visual basic at least we type in dim it's bad no caps dim now the variable name so we'll call it variable as and then this is the variable variable type and for this for this variable we're gonna make an integer and that, that what that did is it set aside in the computer program a, a little square, now visualized as a square, not actually a square, a little square which is an integer and we can put something in that square. So we can use that square to store information. Now let's say we want to say we want to assign a number to that variable. So let's say variable is equal to 6 and that's a number of course for the data, the data specific data type that we're talking about um, one really important computer science concept and that's what this video is about is that the equal sign a single equal sign means assignment it means take what's ever on the, the right side and assign it to the left side so what this video is doing is I mean what this assignment is doing is taking the number six and putting it in the variable spot 
Now, people who know algebra know that this is the next statement. If we, this is a legal computer science statement. Variable is the same as variable plus six. Now, algebraically, this makes zero sense and it's not possible. However, in computer science, what this means is take the previous value of variable and add six to it, and that is the new value for variable. So that's just the whole concept of assignment. It is not the same as equal as equal to. It's assignment. Get that in your head. So for this video, let's make variable equal to six. Now, if we print out variable, it should print out 6, which it did. That's great. Now, now we could do some, some uh, math here. Let's just do it inside of the, the brackets, or parentheses, rather. So we could take variable times... 4, and which will output 24 because 6 times 4 is 24, of course. And that's just math in general. Now we could also use, if we wanted, instead of a number, I mean a different type of number, we could use, it's called a double. This is if it's a non integer number, so we could make it, uh, it's basically it's very accurate. I forgot exactly how far, but it's, it can store. A huge number, more than the amount of numbers in a mole is in chemistry, but it's a huge number it can store and it's very accurate. So if you need accuracy in your numbers and calculations, always declare it as a double. However, this will take up more space and it will set aside a bigger area. So if you were a practical computer programmer, you would only use it if you needed it. But for this video, it doesn't matter. So now we're going to say we're going to print using the console.write line variable and I butchered that and it should write out what we had over there and that's great now if we wanted to use a string data type we would say as string and now that will not ex actually probably would because it's visual basic and visual basic is a language is known for accepting a lot of kind of variations on things that people would usually get wrong. And that's why in Visual Basic, actually, you don't need to use an if statement, which we'll get to later. You still only use a single equal sign as opposed to a double sign. But don't worry about that right now. We'll get to that in a few minutes. So now we can make variable equal to, let's say, hello. And what this is going to do is it's going to print hello because we made a variable which is a string we assigned hello to the variable and then we printed out the variable in the control line here and now we're gonna learn about one more one more different type of thing so let's just say let's change what we called our our variable to we'll call it name so dimensions is which is what dim stands for so dim name as string and we're going to rename this variable here. So let's say my name is random name 679. Now what we want to do, let's say we want this thing to print here, hello. And then we want it to print our name. What we would have to do is we would have to use something called concatenation, where you combine two strings. Now be careful here. What do you think this will output? If you thought it would print hello random name 679, you're kind of right. But the way it would do it is very notable. There is no space because it takes it the way we gave it to it. We would have to say, we'd have to in be sure to include a space right here after the hello to make sure that there is a space right there. <coughs> And I'm going to do a really quick function. Let's just say we made, I'm renaming the variable to number, I mean to num, and I'm making it an integer, just, just so you can follow along with what I'm doing. Um, if we wanted to make it a string, this is if you want to be a good programmer and not keep it as a, 
a number and if you're using it for concatenation. So let's say we want to say, I, oh my gosh, holy cow, no. Um, we want to say, I am, now we make sure to leave a space there again, and we're going to use the plus sign for concatenation, and then we're going to use the new function called str, str of num, and then we're going to add a, uh, another concatenation plus, and we're going to say, make sure to add the space again, we're going to say years old, and of course I'm four years old at heart. So here what this will output is I am four years old, and it will do it in the great way of a programmingly correct way of changing the data type to a string. <coughs> the next thing we're going to go over is is conditional and if statements. So for conditional statements, you can just type in like 4 is greater than 5. Is 4 greater than 5? That will evaluate... Okay, in, in real programming it would. Um, this apparently not in Visual Basic. So we're going to use an if statement here. I thought I could use do it the other way. Remember, okay, one thing I'm going to really quickly go over Never use capital letters in pro in like the the program supplied in the things like if dim. Visual Basic might be able to understand it, but other languages as you go farther along will not be because it is. It just doesn't the compiler doesn't understand it, and it will error out. So don't do that. So lowercase if. Um. So we're gonna say if. 4 is greater than 5, then you have to include then, then we're going to, what should we have it do? Let's have it print out impossible. And then we're going to end the F. And that, that's the general syntax for an if statement. It's if a condition is true, then, and then if it's true, it will execute whatever you have indented here. And then at the end of the if statement, hit end if, and it will execute whatever. And if it does not satisfy the conditional, which this one won't because 4 is not more than 5, it'll just skip over the entire code that's in here. So it should not print impossible. Yep, nothing happened. But if 6 is greater than 5, it will actually, actually we're gonna have that print. it will print possible now because I changed the what it would print to possible because it's not impossible. So because six is greater than five, it executed whatever's in this the block here, the indented block. And another way you could do this is so let's say if six is greater than five, then pr print then output possible. We're gonna say else and what should we have it do? Let's have it print no whole not print not in this online compiler print this is stupid. I don't know why I said that but whatever. Um, so what this is gonna what the else statement does is if the original if statement does not evaluate to true it will do what's in the else statement instead. So this one will still print possible, or output possible rather, because this statement is true. But let's say if 1 is greater than 5, and that will of course evaluate to false, then it's going to skip down to the else statement, and this is stupid comes out, right? Um, now another thing you could do with this, here I'm actually I'm going to quickly go over the the different comparisons. So you could have greater than, you could have less than, you could have less than or equal to, greater than or equal to, or just equal to. And this is the one language where e just a single equal is needed for an equal, equal comparison. Usually it's a double equal or sometimes even a triple equal. But in this, because Visual Basic is meant for beginners, 
it accepts a single equal as a comparison. So, and you can also compare strings too. So if capital J O H N is equal to capital J O H N, gotta finish the string. Then, and then you always need the then there. Um, we're gonna output once again using paste to output our console dot right line. We're gonna paste true, and of course it's spelled it wrong. We're gonna output true. So it outputs true because this is evaluated to true because, and that's what I wanted it to out output was if this evaluated to true, then I wanted to out it have it output true. And now it didn't error out because true is an actual valid data type because it's a Boolean expression, true or false. But I could also output the string. Now you could also, very quickly, this is just gonna take like five seconds to explain this, you could use and, and then you could have and four is equal to four. So what this would do, is do nothing apparently because it's stupid. But you could use and to compare other things. Maybe the compiler doesn't like ands. But if I would if you have a PC, I would highly recommend downloading the Visual Studio and I believe that is I think older versions of it are free. Okay, so now we're going to go into one of our last topics which is a loop for at least for this video. If this video does well, maybe I'll make a follow-up. Skip updates. Um, so first we're going to do one of the most useful kind of loops you can know. It's called a for loop. So the syntax for this is for a counter is equal to, and this is the range that we're going to count in. So let's say 1, 2, 10. And then, we're, then we indent and we say, what do we want it to ex execute? Um, let's have it sum. So, okay, first I have to declare the sum variable. So, dim sum as I am. So, dim sum as integer. So, sum is equal to sum plus counter. And then the next syntax is you have to type in next counter. So what the counter is, so what, here, sorry. And as a good program, we should also put in, we should also initialize sum to zero or whatever you need it to be. Now what this is going to do is it's going to, so the for, it's a for loop. You're declaring that there. And the counter variable is the variable that's counting up. So it's going to be one the first time through, then it's going to be two, then three, then four, until it gets to ten. Um, so what it's going to do is inside a loop, it's going to take sum, which is, it starts off as zero, and it's going to take, so it's going to take sum, and it's going to add whatever the counter's at to it. So this should sum all the numbers between one and ten. And there was an error, of course, because I didn't declare a counter. You know, let's just make it x. We'll call it x. So change whatever you had printed as counter as x, and we're gonna declare it as an integer. And now, okay, of course you always got output whatever you whatever you want to output, and it will output fifty-five as the sum of the numbers between one and ten. That's great. So, and then if then there is something called the while and then an until loop. We're not going to cover those in this video because I see that the video is just about to hit 20 minutes and I have a really slow internet connection so it won't upload that fast. So we're going to skip right to the special kind of math you can do in, and this is the last segment we're going to cover, the special kind of math you can do in Visual Basic and programming in general. And... So first, let's just say, what's 20 divided by 3, right? Gotta output that because you can't just type it in. Oh my gosh, it's late. So 20 divided by 3. And of course, 25, 
25 divided by 3 is 6 and 2 thirds. Now, let's say we wanted to do how many times can 3 evenly fit into 20. We use the, the forwards, no, the backslash. I don't know what it's actually called, but it's the other one. It's the other slash. Um, and that sees how many times it can even, e evenly fit into that number. It's called integer division. And here we have, so this is just 20 divided by 3, which is 6 and 2 thirds. But here we see that 6 only, that means that 3 only fits into 20 6 times. Now the last kind of math that we're going to show you is called modulus. And the way that you do that in Visual Basic is you say, you know, let's say a number mod another number. And what this does is it's basically the remainder. So this is the same as 20 integer division 3 and then what's that whatever's left over. So let's say, so for, for this it will get up to uh, 3 times, so what's 3 times 6? 3 times 6 is 18. So that's all the time, all, that's the only number that can fit in there, the last number that can fit in there evenly rather. And it will return 2 because that's the remainder. It couldn't fit another 3 in there so it spits out a 2. And that is modulus. No. I appreciate you watching this video. If you enjoyed it, please give it a big thumbs up. Subscribe to my channel. I'm sure you've seen the ad notation that's been there the entire video. And share this video on Facebook and Google+. And that's pretty much it for this video. I hope you enjoyed it. And if it gets a good response, maybe I'll make another one with Python or PHP. So remember, give it a big thumbs up, subscribe to my channel, random name 679 Oh, and there's another, ch I'm making more channels coming soon. So one of them is going to be called Autocomplete Answers, and another one is called, it's going to be a vlog channel. But this is my tech channel, so don't be concer too concerned with that now. So thanks for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.